and roll, guys and gals. We're sorry I'm late. Let's start right now as soon as we can. Last week, I want to remind you where we left off. We had talked about the issue of rebuke. And, you know, there's a lot to talk about rebuke. The Rumbum speaks in a, in a very, very telescopic fashion. He doesn't go through incredible details, as we'll see in whole books on, on, on how to rebuke, for example, the Chafetz Chaim and, and other rabbis of our generation take a lot of energy to talk about what to do. But he comes right down to the basic parts. And I just want to review this quickly because it's, it's critical. And I, I felt last week when I was going through it, maybe I didn't do justice. I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to do this again. Okay? I would like to also just to mention that my class in my mind is being dedicated for a complete and full refuah shlema of a gentleman named Shmuel Yosef ben Devara, that he should have refuah shlema fully and completely. Okay, so we start and we'll go forward now. So I want to just uh, okay, uh, start from the beginning of, of, of rebuke. I had made mention, a person who wants to or should rebuke his, his neighbor, and we say that this is positive. The rebuke is a positive commandment. But we're going to see that although it may be a positive commandment to rebuke, one has to be very careful about how one does it. So the technique of rebuke is very important. That's why it is said that in our generation, perhaps we do not have the capability of rebuking other people because we just don't have the sensitivity to do it properly and well. So that's, that's a matter of discussion and opinion, but I want to mention that to you. So we say, Tehillah, at the beginning of this, lo yidaber lo kashos, don't speak harshly to someone. Now, I say this to you as a matter of, of importance. We sometimes have crazy ideas in terms of the honor of there are other people that were hurt or in honor of God that we're going to fix things. The minute you have the idea you're going to fix something because that person was wrong, you're already not the right person to do it. Okay? That's the point I like to just share. You're not allowed to do such a thing. Okay, We are really not meant to push our weight around. Uh, okay, we, we know that God will fix things. We know that there's a very powerful philosophic idea that the Almighty will fix things. You don't have to worry. You know, the Mounties always get their man, as we say in Canadian lore. The Almighty always, always gets this person that he needs to. So down here on earth, we want to win. We want to have justice met out. But there's ultimate justice, and there may or may not be justice that we can do in our own moments. I, I mention this to you as a matter of understanding. So don't speak to that person harshly, because what you're saying by doing that is you don't really care for that person. And that is not really appropriate or, or allowable. You do care for that person, okay? And, and the reason why you want to rebuke them is exactly because you care for them and because you love them. So the minute you speak harshly, what are you really saying? You don't really love them, okay? That is not going to be all right. So I make that point. I just want to clarify that for us. We, we have to speak very carefully, okay? Because we don't want to embarrass that person, okay? Shanamar, as it says, below tisa alav chita, you shouldn't take a, a sin on account of that person, that you shouldn't. Mr. Righteous, you're gonna fix someone. You're gonna tell them what's right and wrong. You're gonna get it right for them. And then you're gonna take a sin on you because you said something that really embarrassed that person and hurt them. You didn't help them the way that you thought you did. Okay. That's what the wise people say, our, our sages. Yachol es mochicho ufana, that it, it, it is possible or one should go ahead and, and rebuke someone. But what happens if their face changes? Ufanav mishtanos. That means that the face goes ashen white or red. So you're correcting someone by giving them a, a real good speech, and now their face changes color. Talmud Lomar, the Talmud says, "Velo tisa lavchet." You just created a sin for yourself. You didn't do the favor that you thought. You didn't help that person the way you did. Now remember that halacha is a lot more detailed than this, and that there are some special moments where sometimes you can speak strongly to someone, especially if they are causing you uh, embarrassment in certain ways in public. But you have to know the laws carefully, otherwise you could end up causing a sin on yourself. So we can say, we can say that if you don't know how to properly rebuke someone, you don't know the, the details of rebuke, you should be careful not to do so, as we're going to see in just a minute. Mikan, from here, Sha'asr lachlim es Yisrael, you can't embarrass them. 
בכל שכן ברבים. And as much as you can't embarrass a person in private and cause your face to drain out and go white or go red, even more so in public. You can't do that in public. We'll, we'll see an exception to this rule and we're going to talk about that, as I said, I did last week. Even though there's no formal, uh, so to speak, lashes for a person who does this, we, we don't lash them. Avon Gadolhu, still a huge sin. So, you know, we sometimes don't know the cost and the price of these things. We, you know, we don't understand if no one gets hit and, and there's no monetary fine and, and no one gets lashes, maybe it's not so bad. The answer is you're going to have to face it in the world to come. So you have to decide in life as a, in general, where do you want your pain in this world or the world to come? Okay, that's the question, a very painful question for all of us, right? We, we kind of would like to push off everything to the world to come. But when we get there, we're going to wish that we dealt with more things here. Thus said the, the sages, a person who makes the face of his friend go white in public. So you give him that stiletto comment that was really terrible, or, or you say you're a stealer in public because you feel you need to, to say something. What do we say? You have to know this, okay? But what we say that if you do such a thing, the person loses their portion in the world to come. That is huge. That's very serious. That means to say that we have to be very careful with how we speak. And definitely that we, if we're trying to rebuke someone, we're trying to make them better. We're trying to help them. And the minute you do something different than that, you have to know that that's a problem and that you could end up causing tremendous spiritual damage to yourself. Therefore, it's a richa dam that he's the Hasir of the You have to be very careful in this matter. Shlo yevayish chaderu that you shouldn't embarrass your friend the rabbin. Okay, ben katan, whether the person is a minor or or a small-minded person or whether he's a gadol, doesn't matter. If you're embarrassing someone in public, regardless of their status, you have to know you're taking a personal risk okay, on yourself. You're causing yourself spiritual damage for this. Okay, we don't really think this way, but we should. So now we know that when you want to uh, rebuke somebody, you have to be careful. We'll see, as I say, a distinction, but I want to be clear about this. We make so many mistakes in our generation of thinking that we have to fix the problem right then, right, right there. They're wrong and you're bad. And if you hurt the person enough, you think you're going to win the argument, but you may end up losing your chalik at the same time. So we have to really be careful people. the shame. Don't call them a nickname. Okay, so who boasts me that he's embarrassed? Hey, shorty. Hey, hey, fatty. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think we hear these in our in the world that I live in very much. I have to say the nicknames, but you have to be careful. If someone has a nickname and it causes them pain, this is a very terrible thing to say. It. So please keep this in mind that the fact that someone else may give someone a nickname does not make it right and doesn't make it good. We have to be very, very, uh, indeed, very careful about what we say. Don't speak in front of that person something that will embarrass them. So remember, even if it's true, you're going to say something honestly, I swear it's true. It's not the issue. If you're going to say something that's going to embarrass someone, and you're going to say, well, I said it in front of him, so I'm, I'm a good guy. I, I didn't say it privately behind his back. No, if you're embarrassing the person, we're talking about the rules of not embarrassing. And if we want to talk, talk about what's underneath this, because remember, the Rambam has been talking about Hilchus Deus, was talking about you know, personality traits. What are we learning these halachas for at this point, these Tariq mitzvahs? What are we learning these mitzvahs for? We're learning because underneath a person who's not going to speak badly about someone in public is someone who's sensitive to other people, but either because they love other people or because they're sensitive, because they know right and wrong, because they don't want to hurt people. This is the personality trait that is really being talked about, even though we're talking about a specific rule of how you speak in front of other people. Okay? Now, what's the case? We have to know case law. What are we talking about? I said this last week. The case is the So when it comes to things, matters between a person and someone else, we're saying be unbelievably careful. Don't say the wrong thing. Don't say it in public. Don't embarrass the person. Ah, so maybe it's different. The Rambam wants to tell us it's slightly different. But if it's a matter of 
of defending Hashem's honor, he'll he'll tell us, im lo chazarbo beseter. Okay. If 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 a person will not come back in private to talk about this issue, so in other words, you say to the guy, look, come with me. Let's let's just speak about this for a moment. Let's speak privately. And the person says, get lost. I'm not going to talk about it in part in private. You can forget that. So according to the Rambam, in the case that he's describing, machlimim also, then you can embarrass him, Rabin. And you can actually publicize his sin if he's not going to want to, to do this properly to, to discuss it. Okay? Macharfino, so you can insult him but in front of him, Vazim, and you can embarrass him in Maklim and, and like make a kill call, like spoil, you know, really hurt him. Now this punchline has to be explained. And this is the problem of, of people who don't know. What does this mean, Shiyaksar Lamuta, that he should return to the better? It means someone that has enough integrity left, enough self-esteem, enough personality, so to speak, that when they hear the truth, they know in their heart that they have to change. If this isn't the case, which is not the case generally today, and you go ahead, you say, you know what? You're driving in Shabbos. I saw that. Who do you think you think you are? In this community, we don't drive in Shabbos. In our generation, you've just invited this person to leave the Jewish people. In other words, giving rebuke where a person cannot possibly hear it or we're not prepared to hear it or they don't have the strength to hear it is not rebuke. It's a sin. So the Rambam wants to tell us that if you know that a person has a spiritual strength to hear what you have to say, then you should say it. Notice this takes a lot of judgment. And I don't know how clear I was last week on this. That's why I'm repeating it and I'm finished now. But it's very critical that you may not just go up to somebody in public and say, you know, that you stole money from me, you're a lowlife. You can't do that. But what about the fact that maybe you'll get away with it? No one gets away with anything. What about the fact that, you know, you know, he stole your money. So go to Basin and try and recover the money. Go to law, go to a court and try and recover the money. But let's say it's not the kind of money that you can uh, easily uh, recover, right? As sometimes it happens. Well, what if you cannot? Okay, sometimes it happens that you can't recover it so easily. That's terrible, right? Well, yeah, it is terrible. But remember that there's a God. If there's no God, none of what we're talking about makes any sense. But the rules are that there's an almighty who loves us and cares for us and sets up rules that allows smooth functioning in public, we may not embarrass people and make them turn white. The, the loss that we will have spiritually against the small minimal gain of self-satisfaction that we would have is ridiculous. So we would not do such a thing. So let me just be clear about this now. I just want to say it. So therefore, we think that we're going to go ahead and uh, give someone rebuke in public about God only if the person has the strength to take it and to manage it. And to cope with them. And otherwise, we shouldn't do this either. So what's the bottom line? If you're not expert at rebuke, or at least you thought about it, okay, and you really know what you're doing, okay, it's very, very clear, I believe, that we should not give much rebuke. In our generation, rebuke is, as Rabbi Mendel once said to me, nine parts love for one part of information. And if we can't do that, then we shouldn't give it. So in other words, rebuke is important. The Rambam says we have to rebuke people only if we know how and only if they're the type of people that can accept it. And short of that, that's not what we should be doing. So I, I just want to make that point clear. I think I've, I've said it enough and said it strongly enough that if we should be people that generally speaking are careful about rebuking. We're going to see this example in just a minute now coming to us. Okay, so let's go forward now. So we have a person that went and sinned against his friend. Below Ratsa, well, Hiko, this person uh, who got sinned against, who got stolen from, doesn't want to rebuke him. Doesn't want to rebuke him. Wait a minute. We're watching the situation unfold in front of us. Don't we want to go up to the guy and say, You're obligated to say something against that guy. Look what he did to you. And the, the person says, No, and I, I don't want to go after him. Below the Dubair Low Klum, I don't want to say anything to this guy. Wait a minute, is he a wimp? How are we viewing him? How do we understand what this person is doing, right? Okay. Why, why wouldn't he want to go after him? Okay, because there's a reason here. That really he's a very, very low level person, okay? 
you can't go against a person who doesn't really have a big understanding of what you're talking about, okay? I mean, why, what? He's not gonna get what you're saying. If a person is not developed enough to be able to take advantage of you saying, you shouldn't do that. You know, the almighty is not gonna be happy with you stealing 50 bucks from me. Okay, you have the money, have a good day, but I want you to know it's not great. If you don't think they can hear you, then just be quiet. This is the same thing as what we just talked about a minute ago, that if a person is gonna get angry at you and swear at you, then, then the rebuke you wanna give them is not meaningful because the only reason to rebuke someone is to make them be better. And you know that it's not gonna to touch that person for the better. Okay, then what do we say? Leave it alone. Osha haisa daso that really he's embarrassed, okay? Umakolo. We know that this guy will be embarrassed like crazy to be confronted. We know it. We know that that even he was wrong, but we know that what's what we're going to do is going to hurt this guy rather than help him to grow. Okay. Now you know I'm, I'm not telling anyone in this room what to do. You can ask your local Orthodox rabbi, but you should be aware of the idea what the Rambam is sharing that it's not automatically you know a, a game that you can go after anyone who hurts you because you want to. The Rambam is describing a case now where a person will not go after that person because either they're just too simple and not going to get it, or because they're too sensitive and it's going to hurt them too much. So what? Okay. So he doesn't want to embarrass that person. Okay. Below the bare low clue, he's not going to say anything. Now we might be, we might find the problematic. You can't do that. You got to say something. What do we say? Listen to this. We don't say anything because he's really a very average person or because he is embarrassed. Umachalo belibo. So what happens is this other person says, I forgive him in my heart. I forgive him. You know what? He needed the money more than I needed it. It's clear that what he did was desperation action. It wasn't because that he's a bad person or evil. He just had to do it because he had no choice. He was forced into a corner that he couldn't get out of. Okay. Okay. What do we say about this person? Lo shitmo. Okay. He didn't say anything. Lo hochichu. And he didn't go ahead and give him rebuke. Listen, what do we make of this guy? Arei zu midas chasidus, okay? Okay, in other words, this is really a trait that goes above and beyond what a person has to do. It would make sense for an average person who's being stolen by from an average person to bring him into a room and say, you stole from me, I know it, please return it. And then you see the guy go white and red and all the colors, but he did steal it from me. And we see here that, that you're allowed to rebuke someone for example, that did something wrong against you if you do it properly and well. Now, if you make them go red and white, I told you five minutes ago, okay, that could be a big problem. What about this one? He doesn't want to take any risk like this. He's going beyond the letter of the law. That's what he's doing. He's gone, going beyond the normal to be able to say, you know, I'm just letting this go. I'm not going to go after that person and I'm not going to make it bad for them. Midas chasidus. So not everyone has to be this way. You're not obligated to give in sometimes. Sometimes, you know, people owe you money, they owe you money. But what we're learning from the Rambam is that there is a time and a place for a person to just let go by. The person will be embarrassed. The person is too simple to get it, okay? And I've mentioned this two or three times, I'm not sure in the last month, but the idea of something called machlokas money, every person, I don't know how much you have to put aside, but every person should put aside some money. So when something goes sour between other people in the community, they can say, you know what? I have money just for this occasion. I'm not gonna get mad. I'm not gonna go after this person. I'm not gonna create Ava, which is anger or hatred. I'm not gonna create bad feelings. I'm gonna let it go. And I'm gonna use that extra money that I built up to go ahead and fix what that person took away from me. That's a hard thing. But again, this idea of Machlokas money or this idea of Midas Chasidus of going beyond the letter of the law and not judging people, right? This is a personality trait. I'm going to let go. I'm going to be the type of person that lets go of things, okay? And if we were more like this, it would be better, okay? I say to myself, okay, let's go on. Okay, that, that we say that, that a person is only, the Torah is only going to be, so to speak, exacting on a person who tries to hide something that was wrong. But, but a person who didn't hide it, wasn't trying to push it away, but was saying, I know it, it's true, it happened, but I'm not going to want to collect because it's going to be painful. That is a different uh, case.
Let's go on. Change of idea now. We talked about people who are doing uh, Averas and maybe Averas in front of you, maybe Averas to you, maybe Averas against God. And we just said we should be exceedingly careful in all cases in how we're going to act. Against God, there could be a place to say something in public, but only if the person is at the level that they'll do tshuva. You can't tell someone to do tshuva that doesn't know what the, the, the word means. Okay? And you, you're going to embarrass people. You're going to, uh, that you're going to cause people a lot of pain. So that is not going to be uh, something that a person should do. Okay, let's go forward now. Let's, let's take another example. Okay? Okay. Good. Here we go. So we're talking again about personality traits. It's like what you have to do is look at the law. It, this is like Jeopardy a little. You have to look at the law that the Torah gives us how to fulfill it. And then you have to figure out what personality trait does it take for me to be able to fulfill this law. And then you'll understand what the Rambam is teaching in this particular chapter. So here we go. Chayim Adam, he's a hair, the Okay. And a, a person is obligated to be very, very careful when you're coming to deal with orphans and also widows, okay? We know that the, in every generation, this low lane occurs, it really does. And we have to be careful, honest people to recognize this, okay? okay? So again, the Rambam gives a reason because these people, whether they're a man or whether it's a widow or whether it is an orphan, their souls, okay? Their, their soul is going to be very low, shafela. These things really, really hit people. They hurt people. Okay? And more than that, as we just said, that their spirit is lessened. Now, you know, you can see sometimes people who are uh, orphans or, or widows looking very strong, and maybe they are, but we know that sometimes the best defense is a good offense. These are very destructive things that happen in people's lives, no question about it. And we have to have an extra sense of sen sensitivity. We often don't because our life is so busy, because we, we see the person in a position of power or control, and we think, what are we talking about? The Torah tells you something different. Underneath, there's pain and hurt. And if we remember this, we would be more helpful to them in, in our lives and theirs. Okay? okay. So let's go on. Okay. So what, what about this? Af al pi, and I made this point now, I'm just uh, saying it again. Af al pi, even though, right? Uh, that they're Bali Maman, that they have money on them, even though they're wealthy people. So we have crazy ideas. Even the Rambam wants to correct the, him, his, his people in the 13th century, right? Even he wants to correct them. So even they're wealthy people, you think it doesn't hurt them? You think they don't believe if you, if you poke them, uh, quoting Shakespeare, right? We know that it doesn't matter what your socioeconomic status is. A loss is a loss, and it really hurts. And therefore, being a, a helpful human being is to recognize this. And the Torah says, do not oppress these people and don't hurt them. Okay, let's go on. Okay. Even if it's the widow, he's giving a severe example here of a king, even if it's the widow of a king. So you think uh, she hasn't made, she doesn't, it's not a problem. You say, even then it's a problem. And what about if it's, if it's orphans of the king? They're going to be looked after forever. They're going to have money as long as they live. It doesn't matter. We still are going to be very careful. That we're going to be very careful with them, how we speak to them and how we act. Okay. So you might think that people who are advantaged don't need it. And we're going to come to see here that it doesn't work that way. Even if they're advantaged, it hurts them. Okay. Mars, it says, Call Amana Yasum Lo Ta'anun. The Torah says that any lady who's a widow and any uh, orphan, you must not oppress them. Okay. How should you act with them? Okay. So in other words, okay, very nice. So, so we shouldn't hurt them. Okay. We should be careful. But how should we be careful? In what ways? Okay. Rach, softly. So we should only speak to them in soft language. Okay. Now, you know, we don't think this way. Here we are. I'm, I'm confronting me and you. In our generation, someone ends up having a loss. Right, and and we, we sometimes are like so strong with those people, and we think that they're so strong and they can manage, and it's no big deal. No, it doesn't work that way either. Okay, a person undergoing a loss, someone loses a spouse or loses a parent. Okay, works this way. The same thing. One loses, God forbid, one loses a child. 
all of these, the person is knocked down. Okay? They may be up and running and strong, but we know that there's an effect. So we have to be sensitive people. We have to find that extra level of sensitivity. So he says to speak only softly to them. Okay? In our society, we're not so good at speaking softly to other people. Isn't that interesting? We're not. You know, we're a generation of speaking strongly. It's a very powerful message. Lo inhog bahem ella minhago kavod. You should only give them, okay, uh, the accordance of honor. Honor them, okay? It's as if they did something. It's as if they didn't, they lost. But you're going to act to honor them. Now, there is a secret to this point that the Rambam is making that we should keep in mind because it says in Pirkei Avos, who is the person who will be honored ultimately? One who gives honor to others. In other words, this is already a, a mida. This is already a personality trait that we want to find everyone an equal or greater than us. We want to imagine that anyone we meet in life is a great person. And the truth is, if you imagine that way, you think that way, you act that way, you may actually be creating greatness. That's a very beautiful thing to think about, that you raise people up by your actions. Okay, Some may not be the... Uh, deliberately may not be deserving of it is a beautiful thing as long as you're not trying to pander as long as you're not trying to gain something from them uh, by by according them honor people who have losses lift them up okay. below you have gufan and don't make their soul ache kaev is mean the word kaev means pain so don't make their souls ache and pain but avoda uh, 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 velo liban so don't make their bodies ache by making them do stuff. So, you know, you maybe you're going to hire them and you're going to say, well, you know, I'm going to hire you, but man, you're going to work your brains out for me. And that's how it is. Maybe that's not the job you should be giving them. Okay. And also don't hurt their hearts. Okay. Which is also very important. Don't hurt their hearts. That means don't say things that are going to cause pain for them. The Almighty is telling us not to do so. Okay. So in other words, everyone knows th these ideas. Okay. Okay. Everyone understands this. There's nothing, there's no one in this room who doesn't understand what I'm saying and say, of course, come on. But there is a difference here, as we'll see in a minute. Who told us to be nice and good and, and to honor these people and to be extra sensitive to the widow and the orphan? God did. So what's the difference? The difference is that everyone knows this. But if you understand that this is no different than lighting Shabbos candles or putting on tefillin, or, or many other actions that are very, what you consider holy actions. This is holy. Being good to people who have suffered loss is holy. It's not 50-50. It's not like, uh, okay, you know, I'm doing it because I'm a nice guy. No, you're doing it because God wants you to be good. That's the difference between a person who follows rules of, you know, society and says, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm a good person. I follow the rules. And someone who follows the rules of God and says, I'm a godly person. Okay, this is a choice that all of us have in our lives. What kind of person do we want to be, so to speak? Okay, let's go on. Okay. And you should be more mindful of their financial or economic situation than even your own. You should be even better to them than to yourself. Okay. Now, you know, in our society, you have to figure out what that might mean. But above all, we should know. That, you know, although we're struggling and many people are struggling today, and it's not, not to make light out of it, it's really, uh, really hard for many. But we should understand that we see someone that has absolutely nothing and they've lost everyone in the world and they've lost their parents, right? You should know that you should be thinking more about how to help them when, when they're in your world than yourself. Maybe they need running shoes. Maybe they need something else. Maybe they need food. Maybe they do need a couple of dollars. But whatever the case, you're going to be thinking more about them for that moment when you see them than about yourself. Because that's what God wants from you. So now I said something at the beginning. We're going to come back to it. What kind of personality is the personality of the Jew who is going to be careful with these people? Right? The answer is very clear, I think. And that is. That, that I am caring and I'm capable of honoring others. I'm a person that has it in my nature to honor others. That is a trait, okay? And, we, and we're learning this trait through the Rambam. Okay, let's go on. Kol hamik nitan o hikiv liban 
Okay, so all all who sort of hurt these people or make them angry or make them have pain, their heart, or rada and push them down. Im avid the the mamonam. Okay, if im avad if they lost their money, harayza over below tasa. So if you go ahead and you say negative things to this person and you hurt them in different ways, then you, you take their money perhaps, or, or, or perhaps you put them down, you're angry with them. You know, it's not impossible to be angry with someone, unfortunately, who suffered a loss, right? Because the reason that, that you're angry with the person, right? You're not thinking, well, after all, you know, uh, the reason why I am angry with that person, they did something wrong to me. We're not disputing yes or no. We're, the Rambam is saying that you have to have an extra sensitivity built in that when you're dealing with a person who sustained a loss and they're an orphan now, even though you might have a reason to be frustrated, and maybe maybe there will be something that you'll have to do to, to make this work, but nonetheless, you're going to have to find a way to do it to not cause them more pain because they're more sensitive. The Rambam is asking us to think very carefully about the type of people we deal with and how we accord ourselves with people who have gone through these particular types of pains that God says, if you cause my children pain, then I will come back to you. Okay, so let's go on now. Okay. The whole shekhen, and the more so, hamaka also, oh, So the person that hits someone, so now you have an orphan, or you have, you know, a, a widow, and you hit them, God forbid, right? Or you curse them. So look, I, I want to be clear, none of us should do this to anyone at any time. This is not what we should be doing or how we should be doing it. That's clear. Okay, that, that I think we can understand very well. Nonetheless, nonetheless, even the more so. So we're learning an extra lesson. Don't do it to anybody, number one. And number two, that you were ever going to do it to anyone. Don't do it to people who are in this category. The Rambam's giving a special case. But he's not saying that you have permission to do it to others. That's not what's being said. What's being said in very clear language is that you have to have an extra degree of sensitivity. Okay. The love said this negative commandment, P chain lokina love. We, we talked about this earlier today, that even though there's no a loka, there's no a, a whipping, for example, there's no corporal punishment for this. So you think it, maybe it's not so bad after all. There's no corporal punishment. Okay. So what do we say? All right, Ancho before Shvatora, but but it's it's it's, it's ownership, it's, it's punishment, is actually explained in the Torah. And it's kind of scary. We don't always read this, so let me just read it. A person that will embarrass or hurt an orphan okay, or a widow, you're not just hurting that person. And this is true for any kind of hurt that you do. If you hurt another person, you're hurting God. God doesn't want you to hurt people. So you have to know that it's not okay. It can never be okay. okay? And that there will be a, a, a charge for this. But look how big this charge is. He says, the Torah explains, that means God's saying that I will be angry against the person who deals with an orphan or widow this way. And I will kill them with the sword. Okay, now that's pretty strong. I have to tell you, we don't see this language in that many places. What would be my punchline here, if I may? Okay, okay. Ask your local Orthodox rabbi how you should deal with the case of an orphan that maybe wrongs you or does something that you don't like. In other words, this is the type of thing that a spiritually sensitive Jew is going to realize. Oh, that's a hot button. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I better not touch that one. That's more than I can handle. That one. What am I going to do? How am I going to manage it? That's the question. Okay. So I want to raise that. You know, I, my class and the Rambam's terse words are not giving you every single solitary answer. What they should be doing, I hope, is raising questions for you. Okay, that's part of the work that we do is to raise questions. So you, now you know what to ask. So how will you deal in the future with someone who is an orphan or someone who is uh, a widow? Now we'll have to see the definitions of the widow, of the orphan in, in just a little bit. Okay, but there's definitions that the Rambam uses here. Okay, let's go on. So, so the covenant of being karis, being cut off, okay, to these people who are in, insulting and embarrassing the widows and the orphans, okay, from, from the person who, we're talking about Hashem, who's going to do this, 
Mi shamar olam. That's an expression. So that expression, Mi shamar, the, the one who spoke and the world came into being. Uh, just a way to, to say uh, Hashem again. Shakol's man shehen tzolakin machmam hen ha'inyam. Okay? Me, uh, uh, from the heat of this uh, of this uh, idea of this Indian of this problem that calls man all the time that they are crying out because of this the man uh, they'll be answered okay? in other words this is a, a promise that God gives to people who've gone through this terrible destruction I will help you I'll be there for you I took away someone in your family that caused you such pain I'll be there for you and I'll come to your distress. Okay. That if a person shall surely cry out, Eli, to me, I shall surely hear his cry. Okay. Again, this is a tough one because you know we have experience, right? We wonder how does this actually work? We see people suffering so much who've gone through these moments. But the Almighty is with the orphan and the widow. Okay. And we see the prophets talking about this over and over again. Isaiah discusses the fact that you can have your offerings and bring the perfect offering in the perfect way to the temple and God won't accept it because you weren't good to orphans and widows because you didn't do the right thing. I didn't ask for these uh, offerings. I asked you to be a good human being to other people. That's the point here. Let's go on. The mat of Arim Omurim, okay? What's the case? What's our case law that we're learning, okay? Bizman sha'ana osam l'tzarche atzmo. So the answer is if I'm, a, if I'm a, and this is important, when will this be true that these terrible things will happen? When I afflict them for my benefit. In other words, I'm hurting them in different ways with words or with making them work too hard. I'm making them do things that they can't do or I'm embarrassing them for me. If I'm doing it for my benefit, I'm going to pay an unbelievable price for this. Okay? Of all, however, if they're really being pushed and hurt, okay, Harav, the, the rabbi, for example, of the community, today lamdam Torah in order to teach them Torah. So what about if, if the, the the orphan is being pushed painfully to learn Torah? Oh, umanios, a business, he's learning a trade. Oh, laholicham bader or that that he has to be pushed to go into the right way, into the right place, and meaning to say that he's a little bit off the mark and he needs to be helped. So if we're talking about, I'm doing it something for the person, okay? okay different case. Areza muter, this would be permitted. Just as a comment I make, just from life experience. Sometimes people think that they're doing things for someone else's help. But if one will analyze carefully their motivations, it's not for the person's self. They're doing it for their own self again and grandizement, doing it because they want to look good or be good. This does not count. This is not the same. And this is not okay. But if it really is for the sake of that person and a person has clarity that I'm doing it only for, to help them, then, then this, is, uh, this is allowable. It's permitted. The FLP came, and even so, lo yinhog baham minhag koladam, okay? And even so, okay, that, that, that uh, you should still, even though that's true, you should still be careful not to push them like the way you push everyone. Okay, the cover. So in other words, even so. So would that give us permission to be a hard-hearted person with these kind of people? After all, I'm doing it for their good. If it's for their good, they should accept that. The answer is again, no because I'm not really doing it for the right reason, okay? And I'm not doing it the right way. And the right way is to be sensitive to this individual. So the words really here are to be soft and speak gently and mercifully, okay? And give them honor. It means to say that it's not an open, open book for how you deal with people who have these uh, uh, hurts in front of you. Ki Hashem yariv rivam, because Hashem will fight their battles for them. It means to say that we have to be really, really mindful when we deal with people in the situation, not to get on our high horses that we think that we really know what they need and not to hurt them excessively and to use a lot of tact and diplomacy when we're dealing with people who we think that we're helping. A person can be uh, an orphan, whether from the mother or from the father. 
Yin Halam, the Nacha Nikraim Yatomim, from what time do we call them Yatomim? And really, until what time are they going to be considered uh, an orphan? According to this idea of gentleness and speaking nicely. So the, really the answer is until they become independent. Okay, so it means as long as they're dependent on another person who has to sort of look after them, okay, has to feed them and, and really has to, to do for them, as long as that's the case, one has to be gentle. When a person is capable of looking after themselves, then this moment is finished. Okay. So the answer is that, he, that a person is finished when they're capable of doing all of the things that they can do for themselves, okay? As the, as the rest of all adults can do. So we see there is a, a, a time, a finished time, where a person is no longer required to look after this person when they're independent, truly independent, okay? But when will that be? In our society, that's later than other people's, other societies. Right? We, we don't live in the 18th century in, in England when a 10 year old was working full time and was looking after themselves, right? Where we have uh, expanded adolescence, but we should keep in mind that this is not about a 13 year old or a 12 year old. This may be someone who's going to university still that still doesn't have independence. But we should be mindful again in, in helping our friends understand if, if we know people who have, uh, uh, you know, uh, orphans, then we should be very, very careful. And, and help them out okay? in, by teaching them what the, the correct rules are. Okay, I'm gonna stop for today and I'd like to take comments. Okay, I'm just gonna open things up for everyone. Okay, if there's comments or questions, I'm happy to, to discuss them. So if anyone. So Michael, quick question. So you're know, like not embarrassing people in public or anything. And it just, it's so rapid with the social media and stuff um, that it just gets carried away. We are being taught a very terrible thing. Everyone in this room should know this and probably everyone does know this, that when you take a look at what goes on in media today, how there's lynchings, verbal lynchings on, on media, on Twitter or whatever, you, you pick your, your uh, Facebook, whatever you want, that, that someone is not liked by someone else, or, according to many of us, say that you're conservative right wing, you can expect to be lynched by left wings. Now, I might be a little bit unfair, but not terribly unfair. The idea of stopping a person's uh, thoughts and feelings or uh, expression because they're not of the right thinking uh, capability, they're not the right philosophy is rampant in our society. People are being put down and insulted and embarrassed all the time, and it's considered normal. We're Jews. It's not normal. We're not allowed to just go out there and be this way. And we most certainly are not allowed to be this way among our own brethren. That's for sure. That's double for sure. So we are being taught some very, very terrible lessons out there right now. And we have to be mindful of this. It, they, they can be very terrible lessons. You're right. Or not specifically without mentioning names. This is one from guy that says a lot of things on the podcast, which is very, I find very frustrating at times. So, like I, I said, we have to be very careful. There's a fine line between wanting to stand up for a set of ideologies and ideas and between the possibility that you're going to say terrible things about people. And we, you know, there is, or there are differing opinions, I think it's fair to say in the Torah world about what the nature of our comments should be and how we should be speaking to one another. I'm not going to make uh, comments that are gonna cause more pain for other people, <laughs> like to point fingers at anyone in general, but in particular me, but I will say that we have to decide for ourselves, what kind of people do we wanna be and what kind of speech do we want to have? What kind of mouth do we want? So as, as a great rabbi once said, we're often way more concerned about what goes into our mouth, in other words, kashrus, than we are from what comes out of our mouth. Okay? We'll talk about this next week when we start the laws of Lashon Hara that we'll be talking about in Rechilis next week. But the point I wanna make is that, yes, it is a huge issue how we speak. And I don't know that the, the ends justify the means. I don't know that, okay? 
the rabbis would tend to say that when you start to give people teachings and lessons and how to, to speak sharply and strong and, and powerfully to knock people down, it, it may or may not be the positive teaching tool for younger people. They need to learn how to use gentle language and how to be careful in their language, not to how, how to hurt people with words. And we live in a society in particular that's strongly painful with words. I think that we are living in a very, very tough age for sure. And this is a very part, bad part of it or a difficult part of it overall. Yeah. I do, I do have a question about what you're saying uh, to not rebuke somebody if they're not, in a, they're not gonna receive it. And, yeah. and it makes sense because you're kind of uh, hitting a wall. But on the other hand, um, for someone's self-worth, you know, it can become a doormat saying, well, you know, they're not going to they're not going to hear anything. And even if they're not going to hear anything, isn't there a place just for your own sense of, uh, you know, I, I need to let them know that I know they're not going to pay the money back, but I'm not going to not mention it because it's it's uh, I be. I, I can't live with myself for just, uh, uh, even though I know they're not gonna accept it. Okay, so let, let me give you a couple thoughts there. Number one, when we read in the Rambam, we were reading about what we call Miras Chassidus. The idea of saying, Ugh, he's not gonna ever hear me, he's too low, low, low level of person, or it's gonna hurt him too much. We didn't say that, that the average person had to do that. That's, that's an advanced level. The level comes about, it, best that I understand, when a person has worked on themselves to the point where it doesn't hurt them because their ego has been by themselves has been lowered down they no longer feel an intense battle of ego when people do things against them because their relationship is with Hashem and they feel that more and th therefore they don't feel so sensitive when people come to hit their self-worth but those people generally have developed ego a uh, developed sense of self-worth because they know that they're you know they're with Hashem they know that they are very valuable, that God put only one of them in the whole universe. So there are certain tools I think that people can use that develop that capability. But the idea that you're not allowed to say something, no, no, you, you can go up to them and say, you know what, you wronged me, you know, in private, quietly, you did take money from me, you know, and I, I'm, I can't say I'm happy about it, you want to do something about it. But every person has to decide for themselves mm -hmm. the value of that, okay? And that's what I was trying to say. What's the, is there a value, not a value? You have every right to it. You want to take them to court because it's a lot of money and you need the money, take them to court, so to speak. If that's what you need to do. I'm not saying by, by my teaching of the Rambam that you cannot do that or you must not do it. Rather, I'm saying that in certain matters, it may be for the person involved, not painful for them. It may be more painful to cause a person emotional pain by saying something than to say nothing. It may be more painful that person to go after someone who they know is going to end up hating them for no good reason. So those are the type of uh, thoughts there. But remember, it's a question of development. Because if we get bothered by what someone does to us, I'm not saying that you shouldn't or you can't be bothered, but, but being bothered is a sign that, that you have a lot of ego invested in this world, okay? And there would be many people that would say that is in itself something to work on. To be less invested in, in this world is probably healthy. I'm not speaking because I've done it or I have a right to say this to you, Ron, because I don't but I can say that I understand where, where the goal should be. We should be less invested in things so that when people come and take things from us, they're taking trash from us. They're not really taking things that are my essence. My essence can't be taken from me. I have a soul, it's eternal. So therefore anyone who steals from me, right? I remember this was in my grandfather's house. You know, it was a sign on the wall from, from uh, my grandfather who was a physician. Those who steal from my house steal trash. But those who pilfer my good name, this is a terrible thing. I forget, I forget how it goes exactly. But we often hold on to things with a lot of power that are not necessarily the valuable things in our life. That, that, that is true, if, if we can think about that a little bit. I'm not, does, that, does that help a bit or no? Yeah, yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other comments or questions? I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I really do. I hope we all have a very good week and a very beautiful Purim. Even though it's going to be a very unusual Purim and not the normal for us, let it be the last Purim like this that we'll ever have. And find a way to really enjoy it. Find a way. Do good. Do good for people. Manas for a couple of people. You don't have to go crazy. Give some tzedakah out for people who need it. 
the Chatsi Shackle. Okay, we listen to the Megillah. Let's enjoy these special moments. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Prisian. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great Thank week. You. Nice Thank to see you. Thank you, Hag Thank you, guys. And you as well. Everyone have a great week, please. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Thank you.